Hello guys, one of my friends asked me to elaborate on the supposed methods uh, that I was talking about in a previous video. Uh, I think those methods were used by traditional um, amazing guys like traditional painters uh, like uh, Simon Bisley, Jamuri, and, um, and I think they are quite simple. Uh, they allow them to create anything they want uh, at a decently reasonable uh, speed with a little, little effort. What I think these guys were, and I've practiced a little bit before uh, recording this video so that I can show you what, I'm, what I was talking about uh, or what I'm about to talk. Um, so here we have a, a sketch, quick pen sketch, ballpoint pen. And then I took a, took a picture of my phone, uploaded it in Krita, in the Krita here. Um, I use Krita because I used to, I used to use uh, Photoshop, but now I use Krita because, um, I don't know, I, I don't remember exactly the reason why I started to use it, but um, I kind of enjoyed it over the years and I don't want to go back to Photoshop anymore. First of all, it's free. Uh, it's easily customizable and stuff like that. I'm sure um, Photoshop has even more features, is less laggy because Krita will always lags on you. You can uh, destroy a save file and stuff like that. So you have to save pretty often. Uh, but uh, like, nevertheless, I don't want to go back. Okay, never mind. So the, the method itself is pretty simple as far as I, as far as I understand. So first of all, we have this um, preliminary sketch, the idea of what we want to paint, because it is a little bit hard to paint without exactly knowing what you're doing. And let's take a look at this diner here. First of all, you go and, wait a second, you trace uh, Dinah with some lines. Unfortunately, the, the layers are messed up, but first of all, you go with the black lines over your initial sketch. Um, after that, you go with, with a wash. Um, sort of messed up here. Maybe we should take a look at something different. Maybe not the dino. Let's see. Uh, how about this guy here? This guy. It's the weird little character. So first of all, we got lines. Just to make things more clear, to establish shadows and stuff like that. Then you go with wash. This is the... Um, uh, wash is a semi-transparent color put on top of the black lines, semi-transparent. Um, in this way, you can adjust the black lines that were um, that were there initially, like here. You can go over, adjust them, make them less um, contrast, or leave them more black. Whatever, whatever you want, whatever you feel is necessary. And at this point here, uh, you establish the chaotic details. You see, you can kind of already see the features of the face because there were, there were none there before. That's clear, like white canvas. And after that, you can already kind of see the details, but uh, this, th those, those lines were so quick and easy and so effortless. But nevertheless, they, they serve as a foundation for further um, things. And then you go with colors, with colors plus highlights. This is more opaque um, color um, that goes on top of the wash, basically. And uh, you go with highlights on top. And then you fix the you fix the outline and you can see here, I've gone over with the wash. I've kind of was quick and messy about it and I've gone over the line, but no problem because I can use my background. And this is a bad color, I know, but nevertheless, I think it shows the point. It corrects, corrects the line here, sorry, corrects the, the silhouette here, however I want. 
if I want to make it like, like this, then there I go. Um, and, and makes and gives you background. And then uh, in the end, I add reflected light. Uh, same, pretty much same here with uh, this Dyna. Uh, let me demonstrate this real quick uh, on this weird little character. And by the way, the, the brushes I use, I basically use uh, like two brushes. Um, from what I was able to, um, to learn from internet and other professional, like, like really good professional guys is uh, while they, they often use fancy brushes, but every single one of them says, you don't need them. You don't need these brushes. Um, you can basically just go with the, with the round brush. And actually I saw Jim Murray, uh, I've been analyzing his, um, his painting um, it was a digital painting of like a Deus Ex concept, uh, like art piece. And you can clearly see that in this uh, piece, you can clearly see the round, just the regular round brush. Um, that he used, which just, just like the most basic regular round shape of the brush. That was like eye-opening for me. And, and the, the art was very good, but the brush was just regular round uh, brush. So, and by the way, Jim Murray often uses salt brushes, like round and salt brushes. So uh, I, I feel like salt brushes are more for like professionals. Um, they create like more polished look for guys like we are, like for us, non-professionals and like just regular guys. I think the hard edged brush is the best. Maybe it, it doesn't allow for the, the, the best polish, but uh, um, I mean, it gets the job done better than, than if we were to use this soft brush. Leave this soft brush to the pros basically. All right, so my brushes are like the most, uh, the most used brushes. Um, Kimbi Kimbited at uh, number five is my ink, inking brush. So hard edge, round, uh, and no change in, um, even no change in uh, the size with, with pressure. I used to, I used to have, I used to run in other brushes, uh, the ones that change the size based on your pressure. And uh, those kind of brushes are best for um, like quality lines. Uh, let, me, let me see, where is it? By the way, Krita has some really, Awesome brushes, like the, the most basic brushes are amazing. Really, I've just just tried them a couple of times. So this kind of brush will give you a really good line work. Uh, maybe if you're focusing like on like maybe black and white uh, picture like this, but I prefer to use my like ballpoint or gel uh, pen brush. It gives kind of mechanical look to the picture. Maybe not as interesting as this might give you, but it still kind of works. Um, for now, I'm, I'm using only this brush for my lines or for like um, for opacity stuff, like full opacity. And the second brush I use for coloring is the semi-transparent um, flatter brush. So I use this for color. And uh, this one is quite, um, um, how, do you, how do I put it? Uh, it doesn't take much pressure for, for it to fully cover, like to work on full opacity. Uh, it's very hard with this brush, it's very hard to make this semi-transparent uh, washes because I have uh, set it this way. And uh, this one is uh, number four. And by the way, guys, use key binds. They help a lot. They help, their amazing keybinds are amazing. Um, so for my like more transparent watches, I have another brush that is keybinded on Alt plus four. That is um, harder to be fully opaque. Like I press really hard and it's still transparent, you see? Not, not really hard, but I press harder, and, but it's nevertheless it's still transparent. So, um, 
I just probably keep like maybe two brushes that, that at least that's what I do. This one is very easy to go through uh, fully opaque. It doesn't require much pressure. Well, this eh, it, it requires like a lot of pressure to go fully transparent. And this is mostly for transparent stuff because it's uh, it seems like it is very important even, even in traditional works. In traditional work, it's very important. So, uh, and my third brush is my uh, smudge tool. So basically it's combining on number three. So basically if I need a soft edge, because all of my brushes are hard edge, I do my hard edge stroke and then I press three. I go to um, smudge tool and then I smudge whatever I need. Uh, and two is my separate um, brush for erasing. Even though uh, you can press E and your any of your brush will become an eraser, I still have a keybind for a separate eraser because this eraser too is always set on um, pretty big size, right? Um, while let's say I can do my lines with a small size brush, and then I need to erase something bigger. So I press two and bam, I instantly got a huge eraser and then I can easily erase stuff. Where instead, if I would press E here and I would try to erase this, it would take me a lot of effort. So I have separate keybind for that. One is for my pencil-like brush, but I rarely use it. It's for sketches mostly. And it gives uh, an interesting texture. I sometimes use this brush. It's keybinded on Alt plus three. It gives a nice uh, water splash effect that you can later capitalize on and uh, let's say paint around it and create some, some spots and um, texture, you know, stuff like that. So, but my basic brushes are number, like kicking by number five is my um, hard edge brush, no size change, no nothing. My Transparency brush for coloring and everything else. And my smudge tool. These are the three most important. So uh, it doesn't matter what your brushes are, as far as, as long as you can create a hard edge. As long, ah, and by the way, I forgot the number six, my number six is my soft uh, IRO, whatever brush. As long as you can create soft edge, as long as you can create hard edge, um, you can maybe smudge and delete. That's it, that's all you need. And with this help, uh, you can create things like this. And uh, other things, let me see if I have them open. Uh, yeah, maybe things like this. Uh, this is a very simple, um, type of drawing I used to do back in the day. So um, I will, um, the philosophy behind this uh, painting is you pick an area to work on, let's say his face. Uh, then you pick three colors. You pick a color for his shadows, a, a color for his uh, hmm, general main color of the object you paint and the highlight color. And this simple scheme of three colors allows you to paint Things like this. Let's see. This is another another painting uh, that you can do with this, and this is this is all done with the same brushes that I'm describing right now. So yeah, things like this, like more. I've tried to. Um, this is like like portraiture. Try to copy uh, to like show likeness and stuff like that, like this. So. Uh, let me try to quickly show you here. So I have my lines here. Uh, let's let's go for a watch. Let's let's make him blue. It doesn't really matter what what color you you um, you make him. I adjust um, the black the blackest shadows here. Let's say I want them more like less uh, less. Um, Contrast here, here, maybe I leave the contrast under the chin. Uh, oh, then uh, maybe here. 
go next to the lines and here and this is the the place where your chaotic details are born of course if you do it like 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 i'm doing it right now it makes no sense little this little, little sense um but when you follow the form when you uh, eventually learn some you know some techniques on how to exactly use it let's say here in the leg i can i can use it like this and already i i, I have some some kind of detail here that I'm uh, later on I will be able to use to my advantage. Let's say I don't want this um, piece to be, this part to be so dark. I will go in and I will adjust the darkness of it like this. There you go. A few, few chaotic details here and there in the arm and you kind of start to see maybe anatomy in the arm. So you can, you can use it to reinforce anatomy and stuff like that, right? So you can already see something's happening there. Uh, you can also play with, or you should play uh, with, uh, let's say, um, you, you can add different, um, uh, like variations to your, to your wash. Let's say his lips are different color. There you go. Uh, or in his cheekbones and stuff like this. His nose is, let's say, red. It doesn't. It doesn't matter at all, as long as you um, basically know what you're, you're doing. It doesn't really matter. So coloring face. Um, now this is this is basically here. This is the color for his shadow. Now let's pick a color for his main body. And what I've always told you, and like in, pre in previous videos as well, is you have to shift the hues. I have. I have it actually key binded on A and F. I can move hue to left and to right, but I rarely use it. I usually just go with, um, just just pick, just go switch it like this, switch hue and maybe a little bit up, a little bit lighter in value. Is this a good color? Uh, I don't know. Maybe a little bit lighter. Maybe it will work, let's see. I don't, I don't know myself. I don't really know what's, what's going on. If it's gonna work or not. It feels like we need a softer edge here. Let's say, let's see. Let's delete this. And then there you go, there you go. So it's, we kind of have a decent, decent color here. Let's add highlights. Let's shift the hue even more. Uh, and go a little bit up. Let's see what, what happens. Is this a good? No, it's it's not enough value. Uh, it seems like um, more value will be better, will work better here. So highlights are usually soft, unless uh, the body is very like metallic and stuff like this. There you go. We have a, a little highlight already here. Let's put it here and here. It kind of works. It's not. It's not terrible, I think. And let's go for, for highlights for like, the widest spot. There you go. There we have it. Like a stomach. And uh, of course, I did it very fast and not really careful. But if you do it really careful and like just like, if you pay more attention to it, then uh, you'll get something like like here in the face. You see the, the, the color is weird for this dinosaur, I, but I made it intentionally. And this guy here, I also made it like intentionally weird color just to show you um, that it's, it's, it's possible, basically. And here I messed up the values, I think, because I, let's say I, I think it will work way better if I would leave more black in here. Uh, maybe at this stage. If I leave more black in here, but you got you got the point. You should you should um, should pay attention to it and um, just just figure it out this way. Do I need more like a value here, or maybe I don't need it at all? You know, maybe it's a smooth third surface. So uh, then we can go with background. Let's say uh, yellow. The yellow background. You see how I uh, was not very careful here and got off some of my wash to the white surrounding the lines. So I just fix it real quick like this with my background, uh, fixing the 
maybe not really carefully done lines. So this method is really good because you always come back and fix. You see that? You see that? I'm not really careful line. So I go ahead and fix it. And you don't waste time um, like painting really careful lines. You just go after and fix it. And I, and I feel like it's way better this way. And finally, you just, just go all over the, the body here. And finally, you let's go with the reflected light. Let's say something like like a green here, uh, reflected light. Let's let's make it real, really harsh. You see this this um, this brush set that I have. It's not really flexible. It's some sometimes you have to kind of you know figure it out. Uh, sometimes it's not very easy to do stuff like this. You have to go really small and. Uh, maybe for a sharper corner here, you see this corner is rounded, like this. So basically this is it. This is how you do, this is how you apply it. You just just repeat the step for every single, like uh, for every single object. The object, let's say, I, I mean, the object is like tail. You pick the color for tail, you go with a shadow, you go with a color of tail, and then you go with a highlight and there you go and you go, and you repeat this step for every single object and there you have it. All right, hope uh, this was helpful. See ya.